Before I ask you to sit for a moment for some Christmas reflection, I'm going to ask you to flip back to page two. For some reason, at this service, we have trouble with the jubilate. <laughs> Last year we didn't chant it well. This year I completely skipped it. I think next year we go to the nighty and we'll be safe. <laughs> Would you please join me in reading the jubilate? Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Now may I ask you to sit? <laughs> So, I think that all of us still feel uh, a little bit of a loss at this time of year. A lot of our families have suffered some, some changes and things that we're going through. Things don't feel quite right. Some old traditions have changed and are being replaced by new traditions. But this Christmas morning, morning prayer, is a tradition that I am becoming very fond of. I love getting together with you and sharing this time of prayer um, without the pressure of a, a larger service, which I, I really enjoy. We do miss a few things here. There is no Eucharist, and that is a change for us, but it gives us a little more time to focus on prayer, and there is no sermon. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> with sermons, you get to hear the ideas of one person. Um, when we have our Christmas morning reflections, we get to all share some thoughts and learn and hear from each other. So last year, I believe that we discussed our favorite Christmas carols and why and what they meant to us. Um, this year, I've been thinking about something else, though. About, actually, exactly 10 days ago, a bunch of us gathered around my dining room table and addressed Christmas cards to send out to the folks in Collinswood who had bought houses and moved into town this year. And before anybody could pen the paper, we had a discussion about what words we should use, what we should write. And we went around the table and different suggestions were made as to what we wanted to impart with our words there. And that got me thinking, as I was receiving Christmas cards, I did a little more reading of what people wrote in them. And some of them were personal, and some of them were very traditional, but it was interesting, the choices of words. And of course, words are important. You know, we've heard it said that a picture paints a thousand words. Well, I think sometimes a word can paint a thousand pictures because of what it brings back to us. So I wonder if we could take just a couple of minutes and reflect for a minute, see if there is any word that brings you Christmas? What, what is that word that describes it or triggers Christmas for you? And it could be something as simple and traditional as joy. Maybe, maybe it is joy that is Christmas to you. Or it could be something theologically complex and impossible to really <laughs> define like the incarnation. Um, it could be sensory, it could be cinnamon. You know, when you walk into the grocery store and you pass those cinnamon pine cones, it's like, ah, it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be a person, it could be a name. Is there somebody that when you think of that person, it's Christmas? I kind of need to think about it. You guys can sit. <laughs> you can think for a second. Just jump in. I brought myself a little stool. So that's a good question. The word I've been thinking of this year is awe. Um, I get a daily reflection, um, and I don't know, like two weeks ago, she had stand in awe, and I thought, yeah, that that really defines the whole concept of Christmas, yeah. the whole concept of the Trinity, the whole concept of Jesus. I'm, I'm absolutely in awe that, that God would send his son eventually to die for us. It's just amazing that he loves us that much, that God loves us that much, that Jesus loved us that much, that he would be willing to die. 
And so all, all is the word. So we start out with the theological complex. <laughs> 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 Well, I'm thinking this is at least for for us, as you talked earlier, it's been a year of change. Yeah. Uh, last year was a year of change as well, but this year is also a year of change. Uh, we're continuing as we are right now, but next year we'll have to make some changes as well. Mm -hmm. And also within our diocese, it's been a year of change. We've brought in a new bishop, and uh, she is making changes. But it's also a case that the birth of Jesus was a change, a big change in the world. Blessings. I've gotten pretty good this year at seeing things as blessings. I think of, I think of the love that the God sent his son to us. And we should learn from that. We should love our neighbors. It's very hard to do. So. Yeah. And I think that ties into your blessings. I, I, I tried that too. What, what have you found has been the... Even something as ridiculous as getting a red light. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not making it through on that, that left, you know, or that, that, that green arrow. Um, it, it, the, the, the craziest, simplest, silliest things. Uh, to just look up and say, thanks. You know, sometimes it's a little sarcastic, like, thanks, universe, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just trying to, I mean, last Christmas was a disaster. Um, I got COVID on Christmas Eve. <laughs> so I didn't make any services. So um, uh, just blessings and, and gratitude, being grateful for the insect outside the head so many times this year. Uh, and, and seeing things as, okay, well, that's not all that bad because, you know, here's some good to come out of that. So something that, you know, I've pretty much taken for granted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have awe and change and blessings and love. Rest. Rest. And on the last one, the school song, Jesus, Christmas break, please rest and rest. And that's good if you can find that at Christmas. Especially this year with how war torn our world is and how we're just assaulted with that in the news every day and our hearts are heavy knowing what's going on in the world. But I find that peace at the end of the Christmas Eve service in Silent Night when all the other noise of Christmas goes away and the busyness and the preparation and the cards and the cookies and the gifts and the wrapping are, they evaporate and everything focuses on what matters. And that is that Christ came into the world because he loved us so much. Sleep in heavenly peace, right? Yeah. simpler one. I know most of you know what I'm doing some studying right now, and so awe and incarnation have been very much on. But I am years away from actually saying anything about that. But for me, stockings. My mother was the world's best stocking stuffer. So whenever I think of stockings, I think of her. It was I was into my adult years and married and learning from, you know, husbands 
family's traditions. I didn't know that you put toiletries and toothbrushes and stockings. <laughs> My mother's stockings were always very individualized, and she would gather things all year. And the little gifts in there were just so cool. That was the best part. So whenever I see Christmas stockings, I always think of my mom. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 